I asked the professor, I said, how can you get gas to condense into a solid and make a star? Dude, you do know that stars are not solid. They're balls of hot gas held together by a balance of self-gravity and pressure gradients. Now, right there, this is absolute stupidity when it comes to science. Gas clouds don't condense because of their own gravity. Are you afraid when you go out there that a cloud is going to condense into a solid material and fall on you? Anybody ever been hit by a falling cloud? You do realize that the clouds in the sky and clouds in interstellar space are completely different objects, don't you? There are some pretty significant differences, like say that the gas clouds in space are 10 to the 20 times more massive than the clouds in the sky. This fact alone would make the self-gravity of interstellar gas and dust clouds unimaginably stronger than the self-gravity of the clouds in the sky. On the other hand, we have gas pressure, which is the counteracting force to gravity in that cloud. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, on my high-tech astrophysics experiment device number two, I have a can of compressed air. Gravity is a weak force. Gas pressure is a much stronger force. Now, how many people were worried that when I pressed this nozzle, Instead of the air coming out, all the air in the room would be sucked in and we'd all die from asphyxiation. It's a ridiculous idea, right? We can easily quantify how important pressure and gravity are to the dynamics of a gas. We simply compare the energy due to gravity with the energy due to pressure. The energy due to gravity is 3 fifths g m squared over r, where g is Newton's constant, m is the mass of the gas, and R is the radius of the gas. The energy due to pressure is 3 halves mkt over a little m, where k is Boltzmann's constant, t is the temperature of the gas, and little m is the mass of the molecules that make up the gas. We care about the ratio of gravitational energy to pressure energy, which is 2 gm m over 5 ktr. Let's compute this ratio for a can of compressed air and for the clouds of gas and dust that astronomers say stars form from. Using the values displayed on the screen, we find that for the compressed air, the ratio of gravitational energy to pressure energy is about 10 to the negative 27. Obviously, in this case, gravity is completely negligible. But for the interstellar gas cloud, the ratio is about 14, which means that gravity is actually a much stronger force than gas pressure. It's just so stupid to compare a can of compressed air or a cloud in the sky to an interstellar cloud of gas and dust. The interstellar cloud is so much more massive than anything we are familiar with on Earth, and this incredibly high mass is enough to generate a gravitational field that is actually stronger than the gas pressure in the cloud, and can in fact compress the cloud into a star. But we still have no idea how gas clouds could ever collect themselves by their own gravity and make stars, compress into stars. Because you see, when you compress a gas, it heats up. When you heat up a gas, it expands. The force of that expansion is a hundred times the force of gravity trying to pull the gases together. So no stars could ever coalesce. Well, when you get a nebula out there rotating around, this gas and dust cloud, as it rotates around, it will begin to gravitationally collapse inward. But, as it begins to gravitationally collapse inward, it generates heat pressure. And that heat pressure causes that cloud to re-expand. It is theoretically possible for it to gravitationally collapse and form a star. But it has to be very, very condensed. And we don't observe any gas and dust clouds doing that. How do you overcome Boyle's gas law? Boyle said, as you try to compress a gas, it's going to build up heat, which is going to drive it back away. We have already seen that the self-gravity of the interstellar gas and dust clouds is greater than the gas pressure, and hence gravitational contraction is inevitable. However, this does not mean that these clouds will necessarily become stars, because gravitational contraction generates heat, as the creationists say, and this heat contributes to an increase in gas pressure. Basically what's happening is that the gravitational energy is being converted into pressure energy as the cloud contracts. If the cloud were an isolated system so that no energy could enter or leave the cloud, the cloud would contract until the ratio of gravitational to pressure energy decreased from 14 to around 2. At that point, the cloud would be in a hydrostatic equilibrium, with pressure exactly balancing gravity, 
and thus the cloud's radius would remain constant. Unfortunately for creationists, the interstellar gas clouds are not isolated systems. The heat generated by gravitational contraction is radiated away into space because all objects above absolute zero emit thermal radiation. In fact, the heat is radiated away at the same rate that it is generated by gravitational contraction, so the temperature of the cloud doesn't even rise as it contracts. With no extra pressure coming from heat, the gravitational force remains much stronger than the gas pressure force, and the cloud essentially collapses at freefall speed. The combination of self-gravity and radiative cooling make the transformation of an interstellar gas cloud into a star inevitable.